In the last tutorial, we created a function that counted the number of words in a string. And in this tutorial, we're going to create something similar. We're going to make a function that counts the number of white space characters in a string. And now, a white space character is defined as being, of course, a space. But then it also can be a newline character, which is the backslash n, a tab character, which is backslash t, a carriage return character, which is backslash r, and I think it also has backslash v for a vertical line. It's something like that. And maybe even a backslash f for a form feed character. Uh, I'm not totally sure on those last two. Now we're going to include the C type library again, and this actually includes a function called isSpace, and it will return true if any of the characters is one of the ones that I've mentioned. So include cType.h. All right, so now we're ready to create our function. Let's call it WS count for white space count, and it of course will return an integer, and it accepts a string, or more or less a pointer. The first thing that we need is a counter variable, which we will set at zero. And then we need a for loop with a counter variable. And the for loop is going to loop through each character of a string, testing for whether or not it is a space. And if it is a space, we're going to increment the counter variable. And you already know the basics of how to set up a for loop that loops through the characters of a string. There we go. So all we have to run is the function if is space, and this is the current character that we're looking at. And if it is a space, we're going to increment counter. Alrighty. And now all we have to do is return the counter variable. And now we're going to create a string. And let's see, I can have, I'm going to start it out with a tab, backslash t, a space in hello world, as an exclamation point, and I'm going to end it with a backslash r and a backslash n. One quick note before I run this. Uh, I don't have to have a backslash t. I could actually just type the tab character. But the backslash t lets you know that it's a tab instead of just a couple of spaces. So it lets you know on site what it is. The other thing, in most operating systems, lines are ended with a backslash in. But in some systems, they're ended with a backslash r backslash in, or just a backslash r. In the past, I think that it was always Linux that ended things with a backslash in. It was Mac that ended it with a backslash R, and Windows that ended it with a backslash R backslash N. But things may have changed, and you might want to look that up. Just a completely unrelated side note. Alright, so let's print out the number of white space characters that are in this string. And the name of the string, and we'll print it out, and we'll see what we get. And, as often happens, I have a syntax error. And, okay, so we're going to turn this into a little tutorial about syntax errors. It says that I have a missing terminating quotation mark character. And it even shows where the quotation starts. And it gives me the line number and the character number, which is extremely helpful. And it looks like I can tell from here that I put a single quote instead of a double quote. So, I look at the program, I did indeed do that. So I just need to change this to a double quote, and compile again. You'll notice that whenever an error message is given, it tells you the line number and the character number of where the error is, and it oftentimes, although not always, will point an arrow to the place in your code that where the error is found. Okay, so let's recompile this, and it compiles, and then we'll run it. And it says that there are four white space characters. And let's count the white space characters and make sure that that is correct. The first one is the backslash t for a tab. The second one is a space. 
the third one is a backslash r for a carriage return, and the last one is a backslash n for a new line. Alrighty, so in this tutorial you learned the is space function that tests to see whether a character is a space or not, or excuse me, a white space or not, and we learned how to create a function that would count the number of white space characters within a string. I hope you've learned something in this tutorial, and as I have gotten into a bad habit of saying, I hope to see you again in the next tutorial.